TYT Sports talking boxing as always with our guy Robert Exel, the editor in chief of boxing.com. Robert, it seems like that it will be announced. At least Golden Boy is flirting with the public on announcing Saul Canelo Alvarez, the 21 year old Mexican phenom, taking on Jose Cito Lopez. When do you think this announcement will be made formally? Well, any minute. Everybody's on pins and needles uh, waiting for the announcement. Uh, hopefully that will be the announcement. Uh, Golden Boy has a tendency to sort of carrot in the stick. Uh, use, the, use the carrot and the stick to sort of generate, uh, you know, fan interest. But it looks like it's going to be happening, and hopefully uh, the announcement will be made soon. The scheduled fight is September 15th. Now, firstly, let's just go through the opponents that he Canelo Alvarez was going to face before uh, what appears to be Jose Cito Lopez. Firstly, uh, he was going to face Paul Williams, but unfortunately Paul Williams had a motorcycle accident and is what appears to be paralyzed from the waist down uh, from numerous reports that we have received. Uh, was going to fight James Kirkland, but he backed out the next day and also his shoulder is not healthy enough to fight. And then he was going to fight Victor Ortiz, who got his jaw broken in two different places and he lost while uh, ahead on all three judges scorecards to Jose Cito Lopez. What do you make of this fight? I mean, Lopez is 30 and four. He has 18 knockouts. Seems like a good opponent. However, he's never fought uh, heavier than 144 pounds and he's fighting Canelo Alvarez at the junior middleweight limit at 154. What do you make of this? Well, I don't make a lot of it. I mean, or I do make a lot of it. It depends. I mean, I think it's, uh in simple math mathematical terms, it makes sense. If Fighter A was going to fight fa Fighter B and Fighter C defeats Fighter A, then Fighter B should be able to fight Fighter C. But, of course, um, boxing is not math, uh, nor is boxing rocket science. What is going on here is that Lopez came up, as you said, from Junior Welter to fight Ortiz at 144. He was below weight at the time. Um, he won the fight. So, logically, um, Ortiz, or excuse me, uh, Lopez should now fight Canelo. Except that, again, he has to now gain 10 pounds, uh, yeah. which is sort of incomprehensible. If he puts on that much weight, or even a portion of that much weight, he's going to be really slowed down, which gives Canelo a stationary target. And Canelo, of course, is not going to come in at 154. He's going to come in at 160, if not higher. So he's going to be outweighed, no matter, no matter what weight he comes in. So I, th I think it's really a shame um, that this match has been made. Lopez is a good kid. He's a good fighter, deserves a good payday, but what he doesn't deserve is a good beating. I mean, well, what formidable, formidable opponent would you prefer Canelo Alvarez to face? I mean, there was uh, Austin Trout, there was Arislandi Lara, Ricardo Mayorga, the faded Ricardo Mayorga. Is this the best possible opponent that Golden Boy could put up there on short notice, what it seems like, uh, against Canelo Alvarez? No. I mean, there are other opponents he could put up there if they wanted to put other opponents up there. Canelo is not a prospect. He's been a prospect for a long time. For 40 fights now, he's been a prospect. He's not a prospect. He's a champion. He needs to behave like a champion and, in turn, needs to fight other champions. Now, I'm not blaming Canelo because he's not, he's not his matchmaker. Right. Uh, you know, Golden Boy's making these matches, not Canelo. But it's time to unify. I mean, fight Austin Trout. Fight Cornelius Bunch. I mean, there are fighters out there that he should be able to beat who are champions. Let's let him act like a champion, um, if that's indeed what he is. Now, it appears this fight might be on CBS over Showtime, which is something that has not happened since the 1990s. Don't you think that if CBS were to put a Canelo Alvarez fight up there, or even a big fight up there, they would want something a little better than Jose Cito Lopez. And I'm not trying to take shots at him, but he's not, he beat up Victor Ortiz, which is clearly, he, I mean, he beat him up and it was a good fight. But don't you think that CBS would want to have bigger names and more, uh, more attention grabbing superstars on a fight night like that? Well, and that is indeed what CBS has determined. They decided that they were not going to take this fight. That's the latest. They put the kibosh on this fight, specifically for the reasons that you just stated. Oh, okay. All right. So that makes 
totally. <laughs> that makes a ton of sense to me. All right, so September 15th, there is also another fight that is going on, which I'm truly disappointed about that they're going on basically at the same time in the same city. The Thomas and Mack Center, which is just down the road from the MGM Grand. Uh, Sergio Martinez, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., you may have heard of them. What do you make of this, that these two big fights are on the same night? I think that it's a terrible thing. I think it's a terrible thing for boxing. I think it's a terrible thing that the two major promote, promotional entities in boxing have decided that their egos and their bottom lines are more important than boxing and its fans. And that's exactly what's going on here. Uh, they've chosen these dates quite intentionally, just as Showtime and HBO over the years, numerous times, have put on fights at the exact same time. It's, it's a slap in the face of boxing fans. Uh, boxing fans want to see the fights. I mean, it, it makes simply no sense from a boxing perspective. Uh, it only makes for sense from a promotional perspective where there is big money and big resentment involved. Technically, though, Robert, HBO, I mean, granted, uh, HBO and Showtime and CBS and all this stuff, uh, if you already get HBO or Showtime, the fight will basically be free for you. Meanwhile, the Martinez Cesar Chavez Jr. fight is HBO pay-per-view. So wouldn't you say that the Canelo Alvarez fight has a leg up on the Martinez fight? Well, I in, in so far as it's free, yes, it has a leg up. But in, in, in so far as it being a competitive bout, I um, mean, it would certainly lean to Chavez versus Martinez. Uh, here you have a couple of guys um, who've been wanting to fight each other for the longest time, and for good reason, because, uh, as you know, Chavez was awarded a title that had been Martinez's. Mm -hmm. So from a from a from a from a fight fans perspective the preferable fight is clearly Chavez versus Martinez obviously Golden Boy and top rank they have a long history of hatred uh, between the two is that basically what it comes down to scheduling their big fight their big paydays on the same exact night and just sort of going at it I can't imagine what else it is. I mean, is it coincidence? I mean, I'm wary of coincidence in general, and even more wary of coincidence in boxing. Uh, we know that there's animosity between the two. We know that there's bad blood that apparently goes back to when Bob Arum was promoting De La Hoya and made him a zillionaire. Um, the bad blood is real. Um, they can't stand each other's guts, as you pointed out. And, uh, and they're going to take it out in public, and they're going to take it out on the public, which is a real shame. Well, either way, Robert Axel will always be on top of it. The editor-in-chief of Boxing.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at Boxing underscore com. Robert Axel, thank you so much for the time, and we'll talk to you soon. Great, Rick. Talk to you.